Today on Locked On Canadians, it's a listener favorite who's back with us to talk about Will Smith, Zach Benson, and Oliver Moore, and all that's coming up in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 826. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. My name is Laura Saba, also known as the Active Stick, and I'm joined, as always, by Scott Matla of Habs Eyes on the Prize and Tony Ferrari of the Hockey News and our hearts. Tony, a listener favorite. Thank you so much for coming back and you're going to be helping us kind of dissect who might be available for the Habs in that first round for that first pick. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be joining Habs after after dark. It's it's going to be a good time. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll leave the pre-show chat to the pre-show, but it's going to be a good time. I'm always happy to join you guys. If we ever get a Patreon, we'll reveal what we were talking about in the lead up to the show. Um, but right now, we we know now that the Habs are basically locked into fifth place unless, or drafting fifth overall, sorry, not fifth place, uh, unless they win the lottery, which, I mean, let's be honest, the odds are not in their favor. So we talked a little bit about who might be available for the Canadians to pick. And I think a name that comes up a lot is Will Smith. And some of the other names on our list, we're going to talk about a few tomorrow as well. Some of them might be long shots. Some of them are just, you know, fan favorites, or some of them might be like really just who's available there. But Will Smith is a name that comes up a lot amongst a lot of fan bases that are picking in that top five, top, maybe top eight. Yeah, Will Smith's a really fun player to watch. He's a guy that I think the Habs are unfortunately in that position of being right outside that top four with the big four in this year's draft. But Will Smith's probably the best of the best of the rest, in my opinion. He's got so much skill. He plays center, so he, that's a benefit for the Habs as well. This kid's a human highlight reel at the end of the day. He's probably the closest thing since Trevor Zegers that the NTDP has produced. And, and honestly, this kid's going to put up a ton of points at the NHL level. He's over two points a game in the USHL this year. Had 107 points in 53 games. He's a good size center. He's a little bit, little bit lanky, a little bit uh, a thin, but that, that'll happen. He'll build up some muscle over the next few years as he goes to college. He's he's been absolutely dominant this year in the NTDP with that that USHL team. And and honestly, it's it's been so fun to watch this kid because of the skill level so high. My question with him is that, like in previous years with the US program, we've seen someone who is a star shooter, like a Cole Caulfield, someone who is a wizard in the playmaking department or a defenseman who can move the puck and then not get nominated for the Hobie Baker, despite outscoring his contemporaries at Boston this year. Besides my grievances, where does Will Smith kind of fit in that playmaker shooter mold? Is there a side that he tends to lean more towards uh, that as Habs fans, you know, we should be looking for because his team is still dying for another, you know, I don't want to say Cole Caulfield, but, we wouldn't say no to another Cole Caulfield type player. Yeah, I, I don't think he's a Cole Caulfield. I think if, if you're looking for that, you're probably leaning towards a guy like Brian Leonard, maybe who's not even that traditional shooter. He's just a goal scorer. But with Will Smith, he, he truly is a dual threat center. I think the ability for him to be able to score goals, use his, his puck handling ability and just that wow factor to get himself open, it, it draws so much attention towards him that that develops his playmaking ability. And I think that's really what – What's been fun to watch this year is as he is this natural goal scorer, a guy that loves to shoot the puck and create his own shot, as he's noticed pressures coming towards him more often, he's understanding that he needs to use his teammates a little bit more. And that's really what's exploded his production this year. He had over 45 goals. He had or he had 42 goals, sorry, and 65 assists this year. That's kind of the, that ratio that he'll probably have at the next level too. If he's a 20-goal guy, he's probably going to be a 30-40 assist guy. So. I think he's a guy that can definitely challenge 30 goals when he gets to the NHL level after a few years at Boston College. And, and that's going to be a great thing for the Habs if they do decide to take him because a goal-scoring center is a really hard thing to find. And, and Will Smith could be that guy. I want what, to talk – sorry, go on. I was going to say, what's the rough timeline there? Because at top five, some people think, oh, within a year or even – jumping into the NHL right away. Obviously he's got at least a year at Boston college, but is he a two to three years away thing? Um, 
in terms of being a polished finished product right now. I think he's a guy that could play in a year if you wanted him to come out after that first year at Boston College and, and be a, a productive and perfectly capable NHLer. But if you want to let this guy develop properly, I think two years at Boston College, sign at the end of that second year, kind of the way Logan Cooley was going on uh, to Minnesota. That's kind of the same timeline. I think Logan Cooley's more than capable of coming out of college right now, but does he? And that's going to be the question. I think Will Smith's probably going to fit along that same line. If after two years, he's kind of accomplished everything at the college level. Do you give him another year in the college ranks? Do you want to get him into the NHL? That's going to be the big question. But in my opinion, after that second year, that's when you really start considering this guy coming to the pro ranks. And I think for that question, it's really how the Habs are doing at that point as well, right? If they're still floundering and there's nothing for him to learn at the NHL level, maybe they talk a little bit more about keeping him in college for another year. But for me, like what I'm interested in are the areas of his game that he can develop. You talked a little bit about him being a little bit slight, uh, which I don't think is a huge deal because I remember, you know, I, I was I was thinking, obviously, he had such a fantastic season this year. Eric Carlson, when he was drafted, he was like literally like a coat hanger, right? Like he was tiny. <laughs> Uh, it worked itself out. So I'm wondering about like with Will Smith in particular, like as a center, you're probably expected to do a lot more than basically any other player on the ice other than your top defenseman. What areas of his game do you think need improvement before he can actually start competing at the NHL level with a Habs team that two to three years from now is expected to be a whole lot better than they are today? Uh, I think the biggest thing with him is going to be that defensive game. I think there are times where he's disinterested i think that's the best way to put it because it's not like he doesn't have the skill it's not like he doesn't have the ability and the skating skating ability to kind of get into the spots he's supposed to be in he's strong in the puck when he needs to be he's able to kind of strip pucks he's really crafty with the stick lifts and everything but there are just times where he just doesn't give a crap and he, he goes back there and he's kind of floating around on top of the zone and you're like you're a center like put it's okay to go down the slot and protect the front of the net a little bit when your defense and vacates and whatnot and those are the things that i think you need to worry about with him and going forward and i think at the end of the day, that's what's that's what I love about the fact that he's going the college route. You give him those two years at, at Boston College, he's gonna be playing with Ryan Leonard and Gabriel Pro, who's who are his teammates right now at the at the program. All three of them are going right to the Boston College next year. So he's gonna get that time to develop chemistry with those guys, continue developing that defensive game and just rounding out things because I think that's gonna be the biggest thing is understanding what you can and can't do against older players, more mature players, physically gifted players and, and whatnot. So He's a guy that has all the skill in the world. I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Trevor Zegers is probably the closest comparable recently with the NTDP team. But even Zegers has had to kind of rein certain certain things in and open ice while still bringing that wow factor of being able to pull off the Michigan, being able to pull off the, between the leg goals. I think Will Smith is very much kind of that same player. Scott, any last questions on Will Smith before we move on to Zach Benson? No, I think I am good on that front. That, uh... That is still who I'm leaning towards with that pick there. So so we are going to talk about Zach Benson in just one moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. How often do you find out an artist you love is going to be in town and you fear you've missed the boat on buying tickets and you go into a mad scramble to get your hands on some tickets? This happened to me recently with so many people, so many artists, so many comics, and this is just stressing me out. And getting tickets should not be as stressful as this. So you should check out Game Time just like I did because they have flash deals and it's so easy to use. The place for last minute ticket deals. You can forget planning months in advance or like me, stalking people all over Facebook to find out when they're going to be here. Uh, Game Time will have deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. And you can get flash deals for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy like me, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. 110% of the difference. So you can snag the stress without, you can snag the tickets. No, don't snag the stress. Like this is the opposite of that. <laughs> snag the tickets without the stress Stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, you can create an account and redeem the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
And what's not a guarantee is how well a player does when you draft him. So we're kind of right now just speculating. Even the Canadians, when they finally make their pick at most probably fifth overall, are going to be speculating and guessing and hoping. And one of the names that is coming up as well is Zach Benson. And to be honest, like I've kind of been sold on Will Smith, but I think it's because people just keep saying that, right? Like people keep talking about it. Like people keep talking about Mitchkoff. The Canadians have said they're not going to go that route. Definitely something that I, I, I would like to see them do. So Zach Benson, that's a name that you hear slightly less. What are your thoughts, Tony? I love Zach Benson. He might be the most intelligent player in the entire draft. He's a bit undersized. He's listed as a center in some places, but in my opinion, he's going to be a winger at the next level. But he's a guy that has so many just intangibles in his game while also being incredibly, incredibly skilled. This is a guy that understands just how to connect the next play and, and do the right thing at the next step, both defensively, offensively. He's excellent away from the puck. I, I love his game, both on the defensive end and on the offensive end when he doesn't have the puck on his stick. He, he might be the most mature and well-rounded player outside of that top top group. And even when you compare him to a guy like Matt Mitchkov, this is a guy that I had in all my draft rankings ahead of Mitchkov early in the season when Mitchkov was having an absolutely terrible start to the year. So he's a guy that, in my opinion, deserves to be in that top five. He's right there with Will Smith at five and six for me. Honestly, I, I love this kid's game. There, there's not much to dislike about his game outside of the fact that he is just kind of 5'10", generously 5'10", in, in, in 160 pounds. So really, he's about 5'5", five, five <laughs> <laughs> and 140 <laughs> wet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny because you, you saw him at the top prospects game, line, like standing right next to Connor Bedard, and then there are pictures on the internet of it now and whatnot. And Bedard's listed at 5'10, and Bedard is probably legitimately 5'10. And Zach Benson looks a little bit smaller than that. So it, it's a question of how much are they giving him on the height a little bit there. But this kid's an incredible, incredible talent nonetheless. I'm I'm looking at the the ice roster right now. Uh, in the WHL and he led the team in scoring on a team that had Matthew Savoy, uh, one of the top picks from the Sabres, a player like Connor Geeky, Carson Lambeau, Zach Ostachuk on it. How much of his points are coming directly from him being a facilitator or a finisher in that versus just having the line mates who are kind of, you know, uh, making things happen there. I don't want to say that he's a passenger in this because admittedly I, quite frankly, can't always stay up to watch the WHO because I am old and tired a lot. I'm curious, how does he fit in with a team that has so many of these other top prospects? How much of that is him kind of being a major uh, point in that right now? Well, even going back to last year, I think the big thing I always saw with him is he's the guy that's kind of driving the bus. And when you look at him play with Matthew Zavoy or Connor Geeky, which I've seen him do multiple times, both this year and last, he's the guy that's making the, the plays happen. He's the guy that's making that extra pass, making the smart play to, to get the puck out of the defensive zone, up, up ice and transition. There's really so many things that he does that just furthers the play one, one step ahead. It, it's really that, that element of just being able to do the right thing at the right time. And then he has the skill to be that offensive dynamic player that you need to play with those guys up, up the top of the lineup. And on a team like the Winnipeg Ice, who are just a wagon in the WHL this year. I think his game has really excelled this year. I think he's a guy that has made Matthew Savoy better, made guys like Zach Stopchik better whenever they've been on the ice together. And he kind of facilitates a lot of things on that team. He's, like you said, I'm looking at like 159 pounds. Like, Jesus, that's, you know, that's a slight guy. Is he someone that they can see still growing a little bit? You said you see him as a, uh, potentially as a winger at the next level more than, a uh, a center down the middle correct yeah he's in my opinion he's played left wing most of this year and i think that's where he's most comfortable he's got the the mindset and the understanding of, of the defensive side of the puck to play center if you, if you really want to put him there and he has played center at times in, in the past but this is a guy i think excels on the wall kind of understanding how to see the entire surface of the ice when you're in the middle you have to work off your backhand a little bit more and while he's perfectly capable of that i think him being able to kind of survey the ice and and be that guy on the sidewalls and, and putting the puck to the middle. That's going to be where he excels in, at the next level, I think, especially on the power play and offensively. Defensively, it's just going to be about him just being in the right spots and, and understanding how to read the the, the offensive t team in that, in that situation. He's, he's excellent doing that already. I think the Canadians are kind of right now, I wouldn't say they're set at center, no, because you can always have better quality centers at all positions and all up and down your pipeline. Uh, I do think, though, that they, like, if they go with small and smart in the first round, like, later on, you're going to see, you're going to see them compensate with size, 
whether it's with that Florida pick or whether it's the second, you know, the first pick in the second round or whatever. Like, I feel like this is one of those things that what I've learned from the Canadians behind the scenes draft video and all the conversations surrounding how they make these decisions is that this, like, if they pick Benson, they're going to turn around and they're going to pick a, a large person, whether it's a defenseman or not, they're going to pick a large person uh, to compensate for that, like fairly soon after that. Um, so one more thing that I wanted to ask uh, is just kind of, if you were, you know, you said you had five, six, and you said that he was good enough to be in the five, six, like if you were the Canadians, like which one would you go for of the two players we just discussed? If I'm the Canadians, I'd probably lean towards Will Smith. I think just the fact that he is a center and, and he has that dynamic ability that if you push him off to the wing when he gets to the NHL level, I think he's going to be a perfectly great winger. Like that's the thing about him. He's got the skill to do just about anything offensively. And then you don't have to worry about that, that defensive game a little bit as much when he's on the wing. With Will, with Zach Benson, it's almost the opposite. You, you kind of draft him as a winger, think he's going to be a winger. And maybe you push him towards center if he if he plays that next season in the WHL and, and kind of develops that way, kind of going down the middle because he has that smart the smarts in the defensive game already to get to that that center position if you want to play him there. So I think they're almost two sides of the same coin in terms of being incredibly smart, skilled forwards that can kind of have a little bit of versatility positionally. And I mean, then you kind of have like your. Your pick of the spoils or your spoils of the pick? I can't even remember how you say it. I think it's your pick, pick of the spoils. spoils. Yeah, you have your pick of the spoils. Like, the Canadians aren't in a terrible position. And there's there's been a lot of despair in this fan base because they didn't get to the lottery. And I understand Connor Bedard is an exceptional talent. But, like, chances are, like, there's going to be 31 teams that don't get Connor Bedard. So you got to make the most of it. So I feel like they've got some good choices. And in just one moment, we're going to talk about one more player that the Canadians could look at before. This is, I forgot to say, this is the first of two episodes with Tony. We get two Tony episodes. We're going to talk about six players overall. Um, and we'll be right back in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. All right. It is time to talk about Oliver Moore. Um, I guess for me, like, my question is going to be, like, what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, biggest... I'm so good at interviewing. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. It lets me talk and, and ramble like I love to do. So with, with Oliver Moore, I think... When you look at that center and the flaws in, in Will Smith's game on that NTW team where he, he does have some defensive lapses, he plays with more pace and shiftiness than actual pure speed. Oliver Moore is the opposite. He has that defensive game. He plays a 200-foot game, and he has absolute pure barn burner speed. This is the guy that will put defenders on their heels. I, I've watched him play against the NCAA teams that the US NTW, NTDP plays against, and there, there's a, a play against Wisconsin where he absolutely just puts two defenders on their heels, makes one fall over, and then the other defender just simply can't handle his speed either, and he's able to get by him, just cut across the face, and then backhand roof to the goal. It, this kid has so much speed. I love his game. He's a guy that's right in that range of, of kind of pushing in. Like, and he's made me kind of go, is he the best player on that NTDP team, despite the fact that he doesn't play on that top line where Will Smith plays? He doesn't have that the, the line mates that Will Smith plays with. I, I mentioned Gabriel Perot and, and, and Ryan Leonard that Will Smith plays with. That trio has kind of been a trio for the entirety of the, the season. Oliver Moore has played with a bit more of a rotating cast. Recently, he's been centering two under-17 age kids, and Cole Eiserman and James Haggins, who are exceptionally talented. Those are guys who are going to be over the next draft, over the next couple of years, going to be right at the top of the draft talk in their own right. But he's been able to elevate their games even. He's been able to elevate guys like Charlie Soretto, Danny Nelson, Ryan Fine, Will Vote, who are all perfectly good players, but they're not the same quality as Ryan Leonard and Gabriel Pro. So I think the fact that he's able to elevate guys' games, he brings that element of speed and he has that defensive game. I think he could be the most projectable of, the, of any of the centers that uh, are outside of that top 10 or uh, top four. Sorry. I'm looking, I'm on elite prospects and I'm looking at the rankings here and Will Smith is clustered in that five, six, seven range and more is 11, 13, six, 14, 12, 14, 18, 20. Is it because he has that defensive upside that people might see him as a safer option? Like he has a higher floor but a lower overall ceiling than someone like Will Smith? Or is that just hockey, you know, uh, cliche kind of creeping in a little bit? No, I, I think that th that does bring an element to it. I think the fact that Will Smith does have that incredibly high ceiling, if he does stick at center, he's going to be an ex exceptionally dynamic center. Like I said, uh, when you mention a guy like Trevor Zegers, that's an absolute game breaker in the NHL already. And that's what Will Smith kind of compares to. 
Oliver Moore doesn't play that that incredibly dynamic game. He really does build his game off speed. When you look at the, when you look at his NHL comparable, if you go with Dylan Larkin, you're really not losing much when you compare to Trevor Zegers to Dylan Larkin. You lose some of the flash and flair, but you're getting an incredibly good player that's still a point of game center on, that's building up his career even as he gets into his late twenties. I, I think that's kind of more closer to the comparison for Oliver Moore. And, and like I said, when you have that defensive game, when you have all these little intangibles and these things being able to elevate teammates and, and really get the best out of guys that you play with, no matter who it is, that's why I think Oliver Moore is starting to rise up draft boards. I know early in the year he was a guy that was in the second round. He was a guy in the 20s. Now you're starting to hear him talk about inside that top 10. Even elite prospects ranked him in, at six. I know on my board he's right in that seven, eight, nine range. This is a guy that I think is going to go in the top 10, might shock a few people but it might end up being the best of the group that's outside that top four down the road. I love the fact that yeah, it's not that Smith can't move and, you know, navigate himself through the ice. Like you were saying, hearing about someone who plays with speed and pace, and I'm looking at what the modern Montreal Canadians want to do and the players they want to bring into this. And I think to myself, a defensively responsible smooth or, you know, fast skating center who has offensive upside just sounds like, yeah, I want that. And why wouldn't I want that? And it's not like, not that Boston College isn't a strong program in its own right with these players coming in. He's going to Minnesota where they're already a powerhouse and are always good every year. And it's like, he's not going to be just given ice time. He's going to earn it. And you know, he's going to earn that because the team's so good. I'm, I, I dare say, because I've had people uh, that I will leave nameless on this because I did not ask for their permission to name them before the show that said they would pick more over Smith. And it feels like a, well, do you want this good thing or do you want this good thing? And it's really not a, a no lose situation if both are developed and project properly. Yeah, that's just it. It, it really is just kind of a, a personal preference between these two, in my opinion. I think they're close enough now that where you're going – what do I want? Do I want that dynamic, shifty, playmaking center that has the goal-scoring touch and is able to kind of break out the game in terms of just that offensive zone domination? Or do I want the guy that's going to be able to play that 200-foot game up the pace and up the ante offensively and in transition whenever you want him to and be kind of that facilitator and be a guy that for sure is going to play down the middle, in my opinion. With Will Smith, you do have that question of, is he going to kind of move over to the wing because of that defensive lapse in his game and, and just his disinterest in that regard. Oliver Moore is going to be down the middle, I think, and, and you're probably going to get a really good center out. I love a good 200 foot player. Um, definitely. I, th I think one thing that you have to kind of avoid if you're the Habs is going the, the, the Vegas route where like everybody's a 200 foot player and <laughs> you just kind of, you, you can't. Right. So I, I think it's really interesting, like, which way the Canadians go, because I think, like, this time last year, we were talking about Shane Wright versus Ray Slavkovsky, and the Canadians went in a direction that we did not expect up until, like, the last day where everybody was talking about, no, they're going to pick Slav, right? I also kind of worry about the Canadians' development at the moment, just because of the way that they handle, like, they put a lot of money into their development. They've gotten, like, you know, some great personnel, but then they also put Slavkovsky at the NHL level and played him, like, eight minutes a game which I also had a lot of question marks about. So I feel like if it's somebody who's not a first overall pick, maybe they take their time with this person and they don't feel that need to put them in the NHL level and only play them like a minute or like four minutes or whatever until they get concussed out of the league, right? So like, I just, I, I, I'm very curious as, as to what the Canadians are going to decide. And then after that decision is made, what they're going to put into that player's development. Now, I could be wrong. The front office might be like, they might know exactly which way they want to go with Slavkowski, and this was part of the plan all along. I'm just not convinced at the moment because I didn't feel that he played enough first, he, he played enough minutes in his first year in pro hockey or in, I guess, in North American pro hockey because he was playing pro before he got here. So like, I'm, I'm just, I'm super curious as to how the Canadians develop these guys because they're not at that level. They need a little bit more work and, and the upside is high on all of them, right? Yeah, I think that's the big thing with a lot of these guys. Is, I mean, Zach Benson's going to go back to the WHL next year for sure. Uh, Will Smith's going to be at Boston College. Oliver Moore's going to go to Minnesota. They've got runway on their their development. I think that's the biggest thing with these guys. That's why I think so many teams have really started to gravitate towards the USHL, gravitate towards that NTDP program specifically, because they know, hey, 
we've got two years probably where we don't have to touch them. They're going to be in a really good development program. They're going to get to play against older competition and take that middle step between the NHL and junior hockey by playing college hockey, dealing with that physicality that, that older players, 25, 26 year old players, even college hockey are going to play with. And then you get to take that step to the NHL. Maybe you play them for a few games at the AHL level towards the end of one of their, their seasons and after their sophomore junior year and you get them that that experience as well i think that's the beauty of the college system is you don't have to rush guys and, and these two are, are going to be exceptional players that you don't have to you can leave in the college ranks let them develop there safely and then bring them in when they're ready scott any last questions about any of these three before we move on to our next episode with tony no, I think that kind of wraps up. The next one's going to be a little bit spicier because we're moving down the first round here, maybe, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna dig into some prospects who may or may not be there with Florida's pick and that are a little bit more uh, contentious, I think, in the eyes of Habs fans. Uh, and I'm excited for that. But before we go, Tony, please tell people where they can find your work because I know I rely on it greatly. Uh, you can find all my work at the Tony Ferrari on Twitter. I've got a game tape with Tony video, which is just me kind of interviewing the players and then going over video with their video and highlights of, of their game with them and kind of getting their take on it. I've got one with Oliver Moore and Will Smith. So definitely check those out on the hockey news YouTube page. And you can find all my other work at the hockey news.com. And also number one in our hearts. As for us, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We're free and available, so subscribe, like, tell all your friends. You can comment on the YouTube videos if you ever want us to bring up a topic, or if you want to use it as a mailbag question, put mailbag question at the beginning of your comment on YouTube. You can tweet us at LO Canadians at um, LO underscore Canadians on Twitter. Uh, you can find Scott on Twitter at Scott Matley. You'll find me at The Active Stick. You can also send us emails at lockedoncanadians at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Tomorrow's part two with Tony Ferrari. <laughs>